Hi, folks. This is Dakota Cohen here with uh, the Building Your Permaculture Property podcast. And uh, for today's episode, I'm going to be talking with Kevin Mullen, who is a specialist in uh, kind of all aspects of, of uh, you know, green living when it comes to um, uh, like the built environment. So how to basically, uh, you know, make your houses as healthy as the outdoor environment. And before I introduce Kevin, I just wanted to tell a quick uh, kind of joke that um, uh, I think is quite um, kind of on point for, for tonight's conversation. Because uh, for, for about five years, uh, when I just got out of high school, I was, a, uh, I was taking my journeyman carpentry apprenticeship for, um, uh, to become a red seal carpenter. And so I worked with, you know, I did everything from, from the foundation works with, you know, concrete all the way up to the finishing work with, you know, the, you know, baseboards and cabinets and, and paint and tile and, and all that stuff. And, you know, we built a lot of you know, really fancy custom homes for, you know, McMansions. Uh, we also did kind of, you know, cookie cutter houses, um, you know, just like the, the song, you know, uh, little boxes made of ticky tacky. Um, you know, I did a lot of that stuff. We also did, you know, renovations and everything. But one thing that um, the thing that actually got me because I always wanted to be a carpenter growing up, but the thing that got me, uh, pushed me away from the construction industry, which is what we're going to talk about tonight, is uh, one, of, one of the patterns I noticed, whether whatever we were doing renovation or building a house, didn't matter that by the end of the job, there'd be a pile of garbage that was like a third the size of whatever the thing we were building. And it was usually, it was my job to haul this stuff to the dump. And one of the things that I noticed on like pretty much everything that came into our houses, whether it was, you know, the plywood or the, the you know, the shingles, the, um, you know, the carpets, the tiles, the adhesives, uh, the paints, everything, as you were unpacking it, there were these little labels that said, you know, this product has been shown to cause cancer in the state of California, and, you know, some, you know, environmental act or protection thing, whatever. Whereas I, I noticed for several years and kind of kept my mouth shut. And one day I said to my brother, you know, as, as if I had just saw it for the first time, I said, hey, I, I, check this out. Isn't, isn't this crazy that, that uh, you know, look at this label. It says that it causes cancer in California. My brother just looked at me and he smiled and he says, well, it's a good thing we're not in California then, isn't it? <laughs> Thanks for all that advice, brother. <laughs> so with that, Kevin, can you, um, uh, why don't you get, tell us a bit about your background, why you got into this industry about trying to get all these toxic chemicals out of our homes and, um, and then we'll kind of take it into what you're doing now. But like, well, what, what was it about this that, that got you into this, into this space? Well, um, first of all, I guess I'm in the, you know, uh, kitchen and bath industry and have been for 30 years. Uh, we primarily focus on, you know, kitchens and bathrooms and, and, uh, and, and then I also got into the home construction industry in 2003 and we've been building and renovating, uh, you know, fairly significant houses ever since then. And so I, you know, I've, I've been to all the trade shows, uh, international shows, national shows, uh, regional shows. Uh, and so throughout that whole time, you know, just being educated. And so uh, 2013 comes along and we go on a family trip to South America and uh, we go to Quito, uh, 10,500 feet. Um, they said to climatize for the trip to the Galapagos, which I've never really understood because Galapagos is at sea level and we're at 10,500, but yeah. I never really thought about it when the tour guide told us, told us that. Anyway, uh, we stayed at this hotel and, and in hindsight, you know, this is kind of, you know, what you do in a health crisis is you look back and say, well, what, what could have it been? And so we stayed at this hotel and, and I'm pretty sure that they were lacquering in the hotel at the time, painting somewhere in the building and, and, I didn't think much of it. I was in construction business. So it's just, you know, kind of common and got in the elevator and went out to the room and off we went. So wasn't feeling good. Didn't know if it was 10,500 feet, not feeling good or something else. Anyway, we flew out, went to Galapagos, didn't feel well there. I uh, went on to Peru where we stayed in a yurt, which was just this natural built environment, obviously out of, you know, really literally mud and wood and, you know, very natural and felt great and came back to Calgary and 
kind of hit or miss, kept going through a process and wasn't really sure. It was kind of, and you know, started to see doctors at that time. And, and as we, you know, as time went on, you know, now we kind of pull into, you know, uh, the end of June and Calgary has a flood. And, uh, and so, you know, you're, you kind of go into, um, operation rebuild mode and uh, my house got flooded at that time. And so, you know, I'm, I'm working on my own house. I'm working on my client's houses. I'm working on friends' houses, consulting, going into houses. And so during that whole time, I wasn't, I didn't feel bad because you're still, you know, as much as there's a, probably a lot of bad stuff in the water at the time, you know, you're not really thinking too much about it. You're just thinking about trying to rebuild your life, quite honestly. And so um, when we started to, um, you know, rebuild these houses, one of the last things you're doing after you've kind of ripped it all apart. And I'm sure, you know, I remember telling my wife, she had to go to the cabin, you know, get out of town. And because it was just literally, you know, all the dust particles, asbestos particles and stuff, you know, we, you know, if we renovate a house with asbestos here today, you know, it has to be, um, you know, you have to get a permit for it. It has to be, you know, the, the workers have to be protected. The house has to be protected. You know, at the time of the flood, there was none of that. It was just rip it out, tear it out, throw it out, move it out. And so we, you know, so you're exposed to that on its own. Then we get into flood mitigation, you know, the flood mitigation, which is the mold mitigation that comes from all the water that's, you know, in the house and whether it's, you know, dried naturally or, you know, we brought in big blowers. And so you're kind of going through this process. So we get this mold mitigation, uh, product and it's just absolutely intense and all of us weren't feeling well and it kind of just it was one of those things that started to throw me over the top and then and then uh as we got a little farther along and started to renovate our house you know we did some spray foam insulation and and uh you know no one had ever said hey don't stay in that house when we've done the spray foam insulation and you know we just stayed there and it was just probably another thing that threw me over the over the top and then the dust and the drywall dust and, and, you know, just kind of accelerated and I just couldn't, you know, I just didn't have time to recover. It's kind of like the, the chemical that broke the camel's back in this case, or the builder's back maybe in my case. Yeah. And so, so we, you know, then we, we decided we'd move into a different house that I built. So we moved into it. Um, you know, it, it, it was probably about a year old at that point. So not too bad, but we bring in blinds and, you know, you have the off gas into the blinds and, all the other furniture that kind of, you know, threw me into another loop and off I went. And so um, it was, I was fine if I was not around anything, but if you took me out for a walk, I'd be fine. If you brought me into a space that had something bad, I, I'd be off kilter. So I started to go see doctors and I saw all the doctors. I saw a regular doctor, functional medicine doctors, chiropractic, uh, acupuncture, uh, you know, natural healers, um, you know, brain scan, you know, internal medicine, lung, lung tests, did it all. And so trying to just understand what it is. And, and when you're in a health crisis, that's what you're doing. You're going to see people and you keep asking questions and you're still trying to understand. And so as we kind of went through that, um, you know, I got to this point where, you know, I'm, I'm not really very effective at work. And, um, and then we had to move our buildings. And so um, this is really where the journey towards building healthier products started. And, and, uh, um, and I was, my objective was, is that I had to build something so I could still go to work. So every decision that we were making was, was that something that caused me a reaction? Or was it something that we could eliminate a chemical? We could eliminate a product. We found a product, you know, what could we do so that when we walked into the building that I wasn't going to be sick? when all my staff moved there and so that I could go to work. So every decision that we made, paint, uh, you know, the type of uh, flooring material we use in the office space. So most office spaces have carpet. We have marmoleum, for example, it doesn't off gas. We had, we, you know, made those decisions around our new office furniture, around our ceiling tiles, uh, you know, so to make sure they didn't have formaldehyde or any other VOC content in them. Uh, you know, so we painted our, our shop with non-VOC painted, painted our offices with non-VOC paint. And so all those decisions kind of, you know, allowed me to show up to work on the first day and, and uh, maybe be as useless as I was on any other day, but just, but I was at least could go to work. And so that was a really big piece of how we kind of started on this journey of doing that. And I think the one thing that, you know, 
that I learned was no one ever said, hey, this stuff isn't healthy for you. And uh, not, none of my suppliers, none of the trade shows, um, none of the articles in general talked about it. And, and the other part was, is none of my clients ever asked me, is this healthy for me? And I think that at the end of the day, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to give people good advice, but you know, that was certainly at that time, something that we couldn't give advice to. And I think that, you know, it was a, a good learning piece. And so throughout this process, you know, I think the one thing is, is that, you know, my body reacted in a, in a certain way. And if it was mold, I'd lose my voice. If it was a, if it was a severe uh, chemical or we were spraying lacquer, um, I, I'd probably lose my voice as well, but then I would actually, I'd get the shakes. Um, I like, and my kids called it the head bobs. I'd literally bob my head uh, uncontrollably. Really? Uh, I would lose, uh, my speech would slow down to a point where I'm not, no one would ever say, hey man, your speech really slowed down. Uh, but I knew that I was speaking slower and actually starting to slur. And so, you know, you, you'd get a little freaked out and, and it causes a lot of stress to your body again and, and to your system. So, um, yeah. you know, so I think it's kind of the best way to explain it is, is that um, it's kind of, it's kind of like having a peanut allergy, except I can assure you that there's a lot more chemicals in the world where you can get affected than there are peanuts in the world. And so you kind of try and understand that and, and all the decisions that you make or revolve around that, where you go on holidays, where what hotels you can stay at, what products you can use. Um, and that was kind of the beginning of the system. And so um, that's how we got to a point where, you know, we started to build healthier homes is because number one, I had to build it so that I could do something, you know, in my office. And then, so, and secondly, I'm stubborn enough that I still wanted to do my own projects. And, and, and through that, I wasn't smart enough not to do them. I just kept doing them. But through those things, I learned you know, other things that, you know, that's not in the technical data, that's not in the, you know, not in the, you know, the industry magazines that helped us learn how to build healthier homes as well. Absolutely. <clears throat> well, I mean, it's, it's, it's so funny how, like, particularly in, in the, um, the space that, um, you know, that, that I, I work in, in, in permaculture, you know, everybody thinks that, um, you know, permaculture is always about, you know, the outside world, you know, the, the, you know, plants and animals and, and, um, you know, earthworks and stuff like that. But when in reality, like we spend most of our time, at least in the cold climate, particularly, we spend most of our time, you know, indoors. And yet when most people go to build, you know, the, the, the house that they're going to spend you know, the majority of their life in, I mean, well, e even if you don't live in a cold climate, if you sleep more than, you know, nine hours a day, like that's half your life is going to be spent, you know, basically in, in one kind of a building or another. And we don't, we don't, um, like there's, at least in, from my experiences, there's very little consideration um, that most people give, even within like the green living space to, to their homes, you know, they'll, they'll plan out their, you know, how they can have a chemical free yard, <laughs> but they don't, they don't think of anything when it comes to the, the indoor environment. Like, wh why do you think that that exists, Kevin? Like, is there, um, is it just like a lack of information? Is it, is it outright just like really good marketing <laughs> or uh, like, what do you think? Yeah, well, marketing is a, a, a important part of it. And I think that, you know, I call it ACE. Uh, and so what I mean by that is that A stands for awareness. And if you don't have any awareness about organic food, uh, permaculture, good quality food, or you don't, you know, you've never become aware of the chemicals that we build our built environments with, what we put on our, you know, on our bodies, what we do with our, um, you know, what we do for cleaning products, then, then you're, then you're never going to, you know, nothing, you're not gonna make any changes. Yeah. And that awareness comes in two areas. You either get educated from, you know, a, a talk show like this, you, you know, you have a health crisis yourself or someone close to you has a health crisis. Yeah. And then from awareness, you become conscious of what's out there. And the more conscious you become, the better you are at making decisions overall into what products that you're going to use, 
you know, in the construction of your home, uh, you know, beginning to understand what those pieces are and then to, you know, being conscious of, you know, cleaning products, uh, you know, the body products you use, you know, shampoos, uh, um, all those different aspects that, you know, before this, before this challenge that I had, this health journey, I never even considered anything. I mean, I was using, you know, the, the shaving cream that was propelled out by propane, um, you know, to, you know, uh, I'm sure deodorants that, you know, that aren't good for me mm -hmm. and, and all the other products that, you know, that I use that, you know, whether it was detergent or, you know, the fabric softeners and, and all those different things that we just, we take for granted that we think it's okay because they're marketed to us uh, by companies uh, that really aren't necessarily making the best decisions for us. And the third part of it's the environment. And as you, as you become aware and you start making better conscious decisions, then as you're making those conscious decisions, you're obviously making better decisions, not only for yourself, but for the environment that you're going to live in and for the environment that, you know, that those products get made in. And I think that, you know, so that all is this circle of life of the product and, and eventually, you know, our own circle of life as well. So it's important to, to you know, you become aware. It's, it's like watching a bad scene in a movie, you know, you never get to forget it. Um, you know, and it's once you become aware of the chemicals that are used in our, you know, in our built environment or in our food environment, then you become a lot more conscious of it. Yeah. Well, and it's, I, I think you, you nailed it there with, with the, um, like, unless, you know, somebody's had a healing crisis themselves or they're, you know, close to somebody who has, yeah, it's just really easy to remain ignorant to this stuff. And like, f for me, it's kind of a, you know, a, a blessing in disguise in that, my whole family is very, very sensitive to these kinds of chemicals. Like I remember when I was a little kid, um, you know, it was a grade four or something, the janitors switched their cleaning product that they used to clean off our desks and nobody, nobody mentioned anything, but like the first day I like broke out in hives over my whole body. And so like, I, I had to, you know, come home. We couldn't figure out what it was we, for a while. We thought it was cause I was, I ate some red Smarties that day and maybe it was, you know, red dye number nine. <laughs> um, but eventually we figured out it was, it was this cleaning product they were doing. And, and, and then, you know, in the construction industry too, like I had, I would get bloody noses all the time. Same thing with you, like lacquer was really bad. Um, yeah. I remember one time I was at, um, I was uh, for like skills, can no skills, Alberta, it was some like carpentry competition and we were inside for like a 10 hour day, you know, cutting pressure treated wood. And I remember by the end of the day, I could like barely, I could barely breathe. And um, I, I just, as I was walking out the door that day, my nose just started like just pouring blood. And I was sick for a couple of days after that. And it's like all these different things. And eventually like, kind of like you, I started to put together that um, it didn't, it didn't, it wasn't working for me. And that, but the big kind of symptom for me, uh, and now that I paid the most attention to is I'll get like really bad headaches, um, just like, you know, crushing migraines that, and I, I never get them otherwise, but typically it's, you know, when I'm in a building that's just had new carpet or new paint or some kind of renovation. And there's a lot of those VOCs that are, that are in there. But I was curious, like you mentioned some of your symptoms, like, like the nodding of your head. Uh, I, I've never heard of that. Um, like what are some other uh, like common s symptoms that, um, you know, that you've experienced or that some of your clients have experienced that, uh, like, if you started to put together, like, oh, if you do this, it means that there's this chemical present or, or is it like, just like a broad thing that can help yeah, people yeah. see if, if they're, you know, in, in a toxic environment? Yeah, I think everyone reacts differently, right? I mean, I've got guys that can sit there and spray lacquer eight yeah. hours a day, six days a week, and you know, there are no problems. And I can go in and I can't even walk through the front door without starting to feel bad. Yeah. So everyone has their own tolerance to, you know, the chemical warfare, I call it, that goes on <laughs> in, in, in the world. And whether that's in the built environment or, you know, outside, but, you know, we're in the farm environment, for example. I mean, you know, we're, we've become tolerant somehow of industry, uh, industrialized farming and other aspects that allow chemicals to be sprayed on our food uh, and then being processed and, and, you know, packaged and fed to us in some fashion. And it's really no different for the built environment. 
is those chemicals are used as binding agents for, you know, your, your particle boards, for your plywoods, for your, you know, uh, you know, the engineered floors, uh, you know, and so you have all these chemicals that are used in almost every fashion. And, and I'm also smart enough to realize that you can't get rid of it all. Um, you know, we're not going to go back to living in, you know, dirt houses like they did in the, you know, in the turn of the century, um, you know, in the 1900s, but, you know, but there are lots of better ways to do not only farming, but, you know, the built environment and it's, and it's making better choices, um, you know, that fit your needs as an individual. And, and, uh, that's the important part. And so, I mean, I've got clients that, you know, that have lung problems and, you know, um, they're just trying to figure out, you know, how to, you know, how to work with that. They have other clients that have had other, you know, autoimmune diseases that they're, you know, they've kind of got better from and, you know, they're renovating. So, you know, we're trying to help them, you know, navigate this process of rebuilding, you know, a home that they want without it, you know, hopefully re-triggering something that occurred to them before. And so I think it's, um, it's important that, that you, you know, you know, for some people they, you know, I've got clients that have kids that have asthma, so they have no carpet in their house, right? Um, you know, so everybody, again, reacts in a different fashion. And, and I think it's, it's um, just helping them navigate through that to make the best decisions for them. Totally. So like, would, would you say like, so like what you're saying is, is pretty much any symptom that, or most symptoms that people could have could potentially be related to some kind of, um, you know, chemical in their, in the built environment that there's no kind of, uh, you know, easily recognizable patterns. Is, is that, you'd say that's kind of, that's correct. Like it's. Yeah. So I want, I, want be, I, want to, I want to be clear. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> and uh, though um, I tell my kids I am, <laughs> I'm not. And so, but you know, everybody reacts in, in, in a different fashion. And I think that a lot of people don't really connect the fact that they walked into some, a friend's, you know, house, new house, and they didn't feel good while they were there and they had a headache or they, you know, they were maybe a little shortness of breath and they go outside and they start to feel a little better. The headache goes away or they get a new car and, you know, they can't figure out why they don't feel good. And that was one of the things that triggered it for me was I, you know, as I, I didn't know, I sold the car that I had for seven years. I buy a new car, yeah. you know, I turn on the heat and every time I turned on the heat, I was just like, what the hell? I feel terrible. I'd have to roll down the window. And so it became, and I remember taking it in and saying, it smells like a, you know, it, like my car is burning. And the guy goes, wow, this is a new car smell. Get over it, dude. And, uh, and so again, it was just another step in understanding, you know, um, the chemicals that were used in car construction and, and then home construction. And, and I think that, you know, it, when you discuss it with somebody, somebody goes, well, yeah, you know, I, I really react to, uh, you know, to perfumes, or I react to, you know, I get headaches when I go into this friend's house, or, you know, uh, all these different things that they, when they start talking about, it, they kind of realize that, you know, they have some, you know, mild, you know, mild issues as well. And they try and man, they don't, don't even know that they're really actually having them or that they're even having to manage them. So. Yeah. And that's, and that's kind of what I'm, what I'm getting at is like, I know, like for, like for, from the time that you first had your, um, your kind of first, you know, chemical attack where you, where you like, at least you were first conscious of it till the time where you were able to, you were able to put, um, oh, that's what that is. That's why I've been feeling so crappy. Like, it sounds like that was several years. Am I right? Like, yeah, for sure. You know, I, yeah. And so it was, and it was the same thing for me. And so I, I guess what I'm trying to get at is like, is there, how can, like, uh, how can we help people like fast track that wreck from like, you know, that ACE where you're like, you're aware of something and you become conscious of it and you start to um, shift that, like, are there, would you wreck? Cause I've also gone to, I've spent way too much money on doctors and I've had, you know, for a lot of them I've had, I haven't had a lot of uh, benefit for, for the amount of money that I've put out only to realize that it was, yeah, it was like, it was just the shitty environment that I was living in. All I had to do was, you know, I didn't, I didn't need more vitamins. I needed less poisons. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. How, how can how can people fast track that that process, or at least rule it out to see if it is even an issue for them? You know, I think the best way to do it is really discussions like what you and I are having, okay. because most people don't don't know, and 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 or they're 
I don't know, maybe, maybe they're just avoiding that discussion. And, and yeah. the, you know, we, we try and, as a, a society, try and pinpoint, you know, uh, challenges into very specific categories. And, and I don't know that, you know, this isn't something, you know, when I went and got a, I remember going to, uh, I went to the one doctor and said, you know, I'm kind of chemically sensitive. And he took the rubbing alcohol and jammed it on me anyway. And, and said, you know, just, he was the, the grumpiest guy ever. And, uh, uh, you know, did the test and there was really nothing from it. And then I went to, um, I, I couldn't get in here. I went to California. I went and, and someone knew, uh, uh, you know, somebody that could give me an allergy test. And I went to him and, you know, I thought this is going to be the perfect situation. I'm going to have all my answers at the end of this. I can't wait for it. And, yeah. you know, they poked me a hundred and some times on my back and, um, you know, and he comes in, he goes, yeah, you're not allergic to anything. And I go, well, what about the chemicals? He goes, well, we don't test for chemicals. So, uh, so it, it didn't really solve my problem, but it helped eliminate, you know, that it may not have been food or at least not the foods that they, you know, that they were testing. It wasn't causing me allergic reactions in the sense of, yeah. of you know, uh, peanut butter or peanuts do for some people, but, you know, it was, it was still that challenge. So I think it, again, it, it discussion is the biggest thing and, and, and for, you know, I think at the end of the day is, is for me is, you know, I have clients that come in and, and some of them really actually, you know, um, are, are thrilled that we're doing it. And that it's even a discussion because, yeah. you know, it's not, a, you know, it's not in the industry, you know, it's, it's, yeah. if you Google healthy homes or healthy home builders, it, you know, there's, there's not a, it's a, it's a pretty rare breed. So, so I think it's just kind of this um, momentum and awareness and as the as you know as some of the people i've spoken to is, is is that the next generation of homeowners this younger you know you know teenagers and 20 year olds and early 30 year olds that are coming in they have different needs and they have different wants than what my parents did my parents you know they they, they wouldn't even be a discussion for them they just built the way it was and off they went and nobody they didn't even think about it yeah and and so the younger generation thinks about the whole you know, idea and equity of, you know, where it's coming from and who it's affecting and, and how it's going to get used and, and what the impact on the environment is. And, and, and those conscious decisions uh, are going to get made, but they're going to really turn into the leadership roles, you know, in the future of the leaders of these companies. And then that's when we're going to see significant change because those leaders are going to make different decisions as leaders of corporations. And I think that that, you yeah. know, uh, is different than maybe some of the ones that we have today that are leading the organizations that are poisoning us one, you know, yeah. one thing at a time. Yeah. On, well, I mean, it's uh, just thinking back to your story and how, you know, like you started to change your company when, when you couldn't, you, like, you couldn't work anymore. Like you, you had, you had to do it out of necessity. And it was, you know, the same thing with my family as well. Like, you know, my dad. You know, they used to spray herbicides in cabless tractors, and you know, if the if the sprayer was plugged, you'd have to get off the get off the tractor, like stop it, get off the tractor. There's a um, the shutoff for the sprayer was off the tractor, so it's all it's dumping out herbicide, and then you'd find the clogged nozzle, unscrew it with your bare hand, and blow it out with your mouth, and then put it back. <laughs> and like my dad's, like he's you know he's been sick like five times in his whole life. And he's just bulletproof. But then like this, the younger generations like myself and, and um, like, it seems like our immune systems aren't as, as, as strong or even better that the toxic buildup is just, you know, so high now that we just can't put up with it anymore. But so in, in a lot of ways, it's, it's, it's bad because, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're suffering from it, but it's, it's almost like, you know, the, when the canary in the coal mine finally does stop seeing, we'll, <laughs> we'll get the hell out of the mine before it blows up. I, yeah, I, 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 you know, uh, canary in the home is what I say, you know, and so, so much so I trademarked it so that, you know, so part of it is that, it, it, you know, for me, most, I did, I counted, you know, as I was doing this and trying to understand, I, I went through about 18 projects for myself. Now, remember, I'm in the yeah. home building and kitchen and bath business. So, but I counted, you know, I lived in a house and renovated and sold the house and all these different projects. So I counted 18 projects that I was significant projects that, you know, that I lived through in that last 30 years. 
and some of them were, you know, uh, month long projects and some were year and a half long projects. And so, you know, you're constantly going into a construction site uh, and then sleeping in it and spending the majority of your time, you know, either at my offices, which I was doing, or, you know, going into my home, which was new and all the off gas and stuff. So the average person doesn't do that. And so, you know, they might live, some people live in the same house their entire life and others and, and don't do a lot of work to it. And so they're not continually exposed to the same things that I was or, you know, people in the construction industry. And so I think that, you know, as a, as a whole, we are because we're consumers and we consume products that are, you know, um, the, the, the plastic bowls we use, the utensils that we use sometimes, uh, you know, the, the cups that most people use. And so all those things continually, you know, we're just continually exposed that I don't think that, that any of us really are aware of. And, and so through that process, you know, we only have glass containers for storage in our house. Uh, you know, I only use uh, stainless steel utensils. And, you know, I, as I said to somebody, I said, the only plastic utensil we have is the one that we use for, for uh, whipping cream. So I make sure I get it all. And uh, <laughs> so other than that, it's pretty much, you know, metal uh, uh, utensils or glass containers. And uh, so it's a very, you know, we tr I'm, we're very unconscious of it, um, you know, and, uh, and so it's, it's important. And it's just eliminating those small exposures, you know, and the more things that you're eliminating, you know, the chance, the better chance at a healthier life you have. Totally. Well, and I, and I, I like that little acronym that you've got, like the like awareness and then the, um, like being, being conscious of it and then actually taking action of the, you know, you know, changing your environment. Yeah. Because the, um, like for me, it's like, now that I know that I'm sensitive to it and I'm, and I'm, I'm aware of that I, I, I listen to my body. Like, and I can tell within seconds now, like when the neighbors are spraying, like I don't, I don't have to hear the tractor. I can just smell it. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, if, if I walk into somebody's house and you know, they're, they're using Lysol or Febreze or like, I, I it's, it's instantly. And, um, and I mean, like, I don't make a big deal about it, but I, uh, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I try to, you know, live my life as much as I can. And, and, you know, maybe I'll, I'll hold my breath as long as I can before I can, you know, get out on the patio or <laughs> whatever through the friend's house, but like, like scented candles are just like the death of me. I, I can't, I can't handle them. Um, so I guess the, um, like, what are some other, I mean, we've talked about, you know, some of the, the symptoms that, that you and I have, have gone through and, and, but it sounds like, you know, almost anything can con contribute to that. What are some of like the worst offenders in our homes uh, with regards to these, these chemical sensitivities, like the things that people wouldn't really, you know, e expect them to, to you know, have a lot of this off-gassing stuff? Well, I think in general, you know, the, probably the one thing that's used more than anything in the house is there's two kind of main things in my mind, but one of them is paint. And, and for most people, when you go to the paint aisle, you know, or you hire a painter, what's the one thing the painter gives you a quote and, and you say, oh, that sounds fair. And, and what's, what's his motivation is to find the least expensive paint now to paint your house. So unless you give a very specific direction to the painter that I want a non-BOC paint, and it's going to be this brand, um, you know, he's going to go choose the least expensive paint that works for him to paint your house as quickly as possible. So, so for us, you know, one of the key aspects is, and when you go to that paint aisle and, you know, in your, you know, big box retailer, home retailer, there's, you know, there's no definition of what is, you know, good, better, best uh, for you. And so, you know, a non, uh, you know, uh, VOC compliant paint for most people would say, well, that probably sounds pretty good. It's VOC compliant. So off you would go. Well, that's just a government regulation that sets out, you know, a, a parameter that that paint has to be under a certain standard before you can buy it. And the next thing is low VOC and you go, oh, well, low VOC is good for me. And well, you know, um, it's okay. But then there's a non VOC paint and, and, uh, or no VOC paint, which, you know, when you think about it, a, a, a VOC compliant paint typically around 150 um, grams per liter um, and a non-VOC paint is zero. And so, and remember that's a liter and the average can now is four liters, yeah. it's not a gallon, it's typically four liters. And so you're looking at zero versus 600 VOC, the average house needs 50 to 60 gallons of paint. And so 
you have this enormous VOC load into a house right from its very beginning. And I'm sure you've been into a house or painted a room on your own and you're kind of like, wow, that's really strong. And, and you know, the rules of the paint are don't get it on you, which is hard. Uh, don't ventilate the room. And I don't know if you ever painted when it's 40 below outside, but you don't open the room. You don't, <laughs> you don't open the window to ventilate it. No. And so, so it's kind of that idea is that you need to, you know, you need to actually understand it and, and, and research it or, you know, hire someone that's going to, to, you know, be your, uh, you know, champion in this issue of trying to, you know, find a pe you know, a better piece, right? And so we, we look at it as um, kind of a, you know, there's HRVs, which is a heat recovery ventilator, you know, uh, you know, brings in the heat and, uh, you know, brings in the air and heats it and, you know, recirculates it. And we look at, um, uh, chemicals as we, the number one thing that we want to do is try and find something to eliminate it. And in some cases you can severely reduce that chemical or toxic load and paint one of the key items. Hmm. Um, so our first goal is to try and eliminate whatever we can, whether that's in a glue or a resin, a silicone, a paint, uh, you know, uh, a, a wood material, um, making sure that it's formaldehyde free or that it's, you know, um, a water-based finish, whatever that is. So that's our first goal. Our second goal is if we can't eliminate it, then we want to reduce the, the, the chemical load. And in some cases there is no choice and, and you need to do it because of industry standard or government regulation, um, you know, just uh, quality control for, you know, for how it's going to, con you know, react in terms of how it's going to stick to the wall. So, so that's the other part of, you know, what we're trying to do. And the third part, if we can't eliminate it and we can't reduce that chemical load or the toxic load of the product that's being used, then we want to ventilate your house as best we can to try and actually um, eliminate that and give you either fresh air through window openings, through, you know, better uh, makeup air systems, through, you know, better filtration. Um, you know, the average, you know, house uh, when they get built, you know, I'm sure you've seen this, at, you know, at Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever, and you go in and they have these little filters and you know, there's ones that are two bucks and they, they, you know, they don't look really too good. And, um, you know, they're made out of fiberglass or whatever. And then there's other ones that, you know, capture more pollen and pieces and they're higher, you know, um, you know, better for, you know, collection of dust and particles and stuff. So I think at the end of the day, again, it's kind of, you know, looking, you know, and in some cases people can't, you know, can't afford, can't do, uh, some of these things, but there are some simpler things to do, change your filters more often and, and, and just smaller pieces again and eliminate, you know, I mean, my daughter, I'm sure can't wait to move out so that she can actually put a scented candle in her room. Um, but, you know, those are, you know, in some cases, those are natural in other cases, they're not natural. And I think that that, that becomes part of it is, is that we, we look at industry marketing to us and I call it the scentification of society and, you know, you can sit there and watch a TV show and what comes on, but Febreze to spray into the air and I'm going to spray it all over my, I'm going to spray it over my expensive uh, furniture and I'm going to spray it on my expensive carpet. And I'm going to spray it on my, on my drapery and, and maybe my dog and my kids. And then everybody's going to smell just fantastic and you won't smell anything else, but you know, that product. And so, so whether that's an aerosol, a spray, a cleaner, whatever, but you know, when you actually look at it, it, you know, society has tried to create uh, a memory sense. And I remember reading this article in Forbes and I'm talking probably 20 plus years ago. And, and it was kind of at the beginning at the front end and long before I ever even thought that, you know, chemicals were an issue is that it, they, you know, when you go into a retailer, you go into a hotel chain, you go into whatever, they all want to have their own scent so that when you go into that store or you smell it somewhere, is that you have this great feeling that you're at the latest, you know, uh, big yeah. chain and, and uh, you know, it's so like, they pump that scent into it. It's like a brand, like it's part of it's their your home. brand. It's and part of their brand. brand. And it's scent. That's, that's a crazy. I never thought of that, but it's so true. Every, every store in the mall, like I haven't been to a mall for years, but every store smelled different, you know? Yeah. So you can, when you come out of Chinook Center here in Calgary, uh, you know, all you, you just smell like a big potpourri because you've been in every retailer that's got their own, you know, branded scent. And, and you just, you don't, you're overwhelmed. If you're in a situation like me, you become overwhelmed. So, so it's just kind of that, that, but when you look at, 
how society has, has you know, we, we look at, you know, the fabric softeners of the world, the aerosols of the world, the, you know, the, the air fresheners that you're going to put in the bathroom. So, you know, so it doesn't smell like a bathroom, I guess. And so as you keep going through all these aspects, all those things aren't, you know, those aren't baked cookies that they're throwing around at you. They're, they're a combination or a culmination of a bunch of chemicals that are created to create the scent. And, and that, that the idea of the term fragrance is actually the thing that, that people should be, you know, not every term fragrance as uh, some people say is bad for you, but fragrance in general is a way for industry to hide their, you know, their, their scent uh, in it. And so when you go to a fabric softener, what's one of a fabric softener company and, you know, as you try and get to their, you know, their formulation and you, and you get to their, you know, material data sheet and you, and after you, I, on the fourth website, I finally found the, the actual data that they had for the term fragrance. And when you open that up, it went to, uh, I think it was about 45 pages of chemicals and it would make up any one of 2000 chemicals wow. and right down from milk and, you know, you know, different pieces, but basically it was 2000 different chemicals could be used in any combination to make the term fragrance. And so you kind of get this, wow. you get the, I, I mean, I remember the shock and awe of just clicking on that. And then just the pages just kept coming at me yeah. and, and, you know, there is no way that, that any corporation can really know what that impact on, on the individual is and what that is in terms of, and, and like I said, every individual is different and some people will never affect them, but we actually don't know what that long-term impact is of that product no. that, you know, that, that we're, the, you know, that we're just throwing on our, every piece of our clothing and, and everything. So, you know, those are, you know, we have nothing that has the term fragrance on it that I can help or, you know, I, I know my, you know, it gets, they try and sneak it into my house, but I, I'm like a sniff dog. I can find it and kick it out right away. So yeah, um, totally. Uh, that's that's insane. So so you were saying there's like in a in a, um, a VOC compliant paint, there'd be like there'd be like you know 600 grams of of VOC content. VOC in like in a, in a gallon of paint. Gallon of paint, and there's there'd be 60 gallons in an average size house. Yeah. That, I yeah. mean, I mean, like you're talking that's that's um that's over a pound per gallon. It's like a pound and a half per gallon. Of yeah. VOC. So it's just it's just that VOC content, the vol volatile organic compound that creates the smell that you smell when you go into the house. And if you paint it with a non-VOC paint, you wouldn't even know the painter no. was in the house in, in most cases. But that so you I, might smell from the moisture, but you don't smell from the paint. Totally. But I mean, like just like you, you think about that though, is like I mean, just kind of a, a gross analogy, but it's like, you know, when, when you smell somebody's fart, like that's, you're literally like, it's, you know, fecal <laughs> particles coming into your nose, but like, it's the same thing with these VOCs, except with a fart, like there's not a pound of it or a pound and a half per gallon. That's, that's literally get, go, has to, cause like, I guess here's a better question is like, d does all, does hundred percent of those, v you know, volatile organic co compounds, do they all off gas? over the, their lifetime or do some of them get actually locked into the paint or? Well, some of them stay there. I, I mean, you know, in some cases, you know, I, I've been on projects where, you know, a, a, a painted cabinet that's closed, you know, somebody might not smell it, but when I open that door, I can smell it. Yeah. And so, you know, it's, it's uh, the VOC of the paint is, you know, it'll dissipate over time, but it's, you know, but you're, it, it's still, you know, if you can, if you can find a way to reduce that, you know, the toxic load in the house, then, you know, go ahead, right? Yeah. I mean, paint is still a, you know, a, a byproduct, a petrochemical byproduct. It's not, yeah, yeah. you know, it's not, it's, you know, you can buy different products and do different things, but paint as we know it, and as society knows it, which is, you know, in general is, uh, you know, is, is a you know, a petrochemical base, but you know, the, the, the reality is, is that there's more information on a can of soup than there is on a can of paint. The can of paint doesn't really tell you much no. other than you have to actually read through what they're, you know, what they're trying to communicate to you, whether it's VOC compliant or low VOC or no VOC and, and try and, and, and navigate through that without a lot of information on the, you know, on the sales floor where you're trying to buy it at. Yeah. And, and most of the people that we talk to and, you know, we're, we're working on a, you know, on 
a, a project here and, you know, and when you'd go, my, my staff would go to the paint store and ask the question about it. Even the people that are selling the paint really don't even have the answers for you. So if you're not doing it yourself, you're going to have a tough time. Yeah. I mean, like, that's just, um, like when you really start to think about it, where it's like, if, if you can, if you can smell it, like it, it means that you're literally like you're, you're taking it into your, into your body. Like you're, you're essentially consuming it. And, um, and then when you, when you start talking about like the actual, the amount of it that is just from the paint alone. And then all the other things that are in your house is from, you know, the stains and the floorings and the, um, uh, you know, the, one of the worst things that I remember actually was the, um, like appliances and fixtures. Like when, when you got into, you know, like unpacking the, um, like, you know, light fixtures or the, um, like the, um, you know, the stuff that, you know, the, you know, uh, like bathroom closet hangers and, and all that stuff that like just comes, it comes in packages is like everybody, like it's like that Amazon smell where you, you know, you open the box from Amazon and it just smells like, I don't know, that must be what China smells like <laughs> or something. Cause it's just that, that, that visceral chemical metallic smell. And, um, and like, you know, almost all of the, the fixtures and appliances that I remember putting into houses, they all had that when you open the boxes. Yeah. So I think, you know, the, you know, from the factory floors that I've been on, you know, the reality is, is that the moment that it's finished, it gets wrapped and packed. Yeah. And so, so it has no time to actually off gas at the factory level uh, before it's, you know, before it's packed and shipped to you as a homeowner. Yeah. And then you open that box. And for some people, they just go, oh, that, you know, they don't even, it's yeah. just, uh, they don't react to it. And yeah. so I think, you know, uh, I'm trying to be conscious. I still try and live. I, you know, I still, you know, I, I got to buy a computer. Or I got to have a, a microphone and, you know, but I, uh, I can tell you when this first came out of the box, uh, you know, it was high VOC. It's a couple months old. I can sit around it now, but it takes time for things to off gas. And, and the more, you know, the more product, you know, we're a consumer society. So we're always going to be bringing things into our house in general. Right. I mean, and, and as you are, you know, it's being conscious of that and whether or not you even need it. I mean, if you want to protect the environment, yeah. don't buy stuff. That's the, you know, that ultimately is the, you know, is 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 the best use but that you know society still wants to move forward we all want to so i think it's but it's being conscious of the decisions that you're making every time you do buy something and and how it's going to do and so when i buy something lots of times you know i bought a new car it sat in my garage for months with the windows down so it could off gas before i would go drive it and then even to this day it's a three-year-old car i still drive it with the window down probably 95 percent of the time uh, much to the chagrin of my family. Um, but, you know, that's, I can actually feel the difference when I have the windows up and the heat on. And then if I roll down the window, then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll reset essentially. And so that it's just kind of this evolution. And, you know, as a friend of mine said in, you know, kind of three or three or plus years into the journey who had had, you know, uh, um, early onset Parkinson's. And at that point, you know, she, you know, she's maybe in her mid forties. And, and she said, you know, Kevin, you're just going to have to just gonna learn to live with it. Right. Like, you know, I'm pissed off because it's kind of affecting me and, and what I could do and where I could go. And she just learned to live with it. Like, I got to live with this, like, you know, and I don't think it would have been as impactful if somebody else said that to me, quite honestly, if, um, you know, but because of the way she said it and, and my respect for her and, and understanding the challenges that she's had, it made it, you know, it kind of, you know, somebody, I got a Mike Tyson hit to the side of the head and I went, okay, like, let's, you know, let's reset about this and think about this and, you know, what do I have to do to do it and, and, and what other tools can I do and, uh, to try and, you know, mitigate, you know, the challenges that I'm having. Yeah, totally. Well, and, and but I, 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 I really do think that, like as awareness and consciousness grows and we start to, you know, our, we start to shift the decisions. Like you said, our, our environment will actually change. Like if, if people stopped buying, you know, uh, you know, VOC compliant paint, they wouldn't make it anymore. And, um, you know, same thing if people stop buying these things that are, um, and it's, it's difficult right now because like, if it's, there's only one game in town, like you're kind of stuck, but that that's the part that I love about, 
um, about business is that like, uh, and, and, you know, and capitalism is that, is that we, like, we can, we get to vote every time we spend our money for what we want and what we don't want. And uh, so like, that's, I, I'm, I'm actually hopeful that, that we can, we can move forward and, and, and slowly eliminate some of these stuffs. And, and like you said before, education is, is the first step. You have to, you have to be aware that there's actually even a problem because um, most people, they just, you know, they, something goes wrong, they go to the doctor, they get a pill to, you know, numb the symptoms and, you know, it's just business as usual. Yeah. And even that in a lot of ways doesn't solve the problem. I think that, you know, industry is there as a return on equity, a return to shareholders, uh, you know, especially in the public vehicle, which is really where majority of our products get made from is the public uh, entities of, you know, the largest corporations in the world are the ones making the majority of the products that we consume for our houses. And, and, you know, they're out there as a return on equity and a return on capital. So if industry changes and says, you know, you, you know, and one of the big things that, you know, I talked about with someone today was, is look, he said, you know, at the end of the day, you know, within a 10 year period, they went from having formaldehyde as a, as a component of insul pink insulation to it's not being an insulation anymore. And I think the most <laughs> important thing he said uh, was more, um, do you want to be the last guy to specify the last bale of insulation going into that house? Or are you actually going to move forward and choose a better product for your people? Yeah. Because ultimately, that's really what it's about. And, and, and that decisions come from, you know, homeowners saying, I want this. And, and so the industry has to meet that demand and, and, and ultimately, you know, help the market, uh, you know, move in the right direction, which is, you know, less uh, exposure, less toxics uh, products into the, into the homes that we live in. So, yeah. Well, so like on that, on that note, you were, um, one of the things that we you mentioned um, kind of off offline was, was that um, like there's, there's a certification now that, that in, in your, some of your products and, and um, projects have been a part of this is it's called Green Guard. And I, I, I've, I'm not familiar with this and I'm, I'm guessing most of the audience is here. So can you explain what this Green Guard certification is and, and, and uh, the different projects and, and products that you have now that are certified under that new standard? Yeah, so we, um, I had a, a homeowner that uh, had a, a son that had a fairly rare cancer and, but they wanted to build a house and uh, she was an engineer by trade and wanted to, to really focus her whole house on, you know, building a, a healthy home. And uh, I had built a house for her before about 15, 17, 15, 17 years ago, something like that. And um, so, so when they went to build this new house, she said, Hey, I want to build this healthy home. And, you know, she knew that I had some uh, health challenges. And so, uh, and what we were doing in terms of our showroom and, and, and how we were progressing. And so we worked together on a lot of areas of trying to, you know, research information and, and, uh, and, and she helped us connect with, uh, it's called UL Green Guard and UL is like a certifier. And um, so, UL Green Guard tests products for companies and, and uh, lays out guidelines that, that corporations can follow. And one of them is UL Green Guard uh, uh, for cabinetry and there's a certification so you can get to, in, in our case, we got to UL Green Guard Gold, which uh, you know, means that we, you know, it's, it's low formaldehyde, low exposure, low VOC. Uh, and then the other, the other one that uh, for her home that we, you know, uh, that we did. And then one of the reasons I think we qualified was that we had our cabinetry in there that was, that eventually met UL Green Guard Gold. And, and then uh, every decision that went into her home from, you know, right from the very beginning, right to the very end was about, you know, what was the, you know, what was, what would be the health consequences and what's the toxic load of it. And so we made all those decisions, very conscious and managing you know, the products that were going in, managing the trades that were working in the house and managing, you know, how it got executed on and making sure that, you know, we tried to meet this guideline of UL 3036. Now that's not a very exciting name by any stretch, but the reality was, is that that was, that's what they called it. And so we're the, we have the first home outside of Japan that's ever qualified for that. 
Wow. And so our qualification, there's two kind of main qualifications. They go through all the different products that go into it. They, they, they check all these other uh, you know, necessities to make sure that you don't have any, you know, any potential water penetration and so on. But the two that, you know, that we're most concerned about and that we've always focused on as a company is formaldehyde and on uh, VOC content. And so our, our goal was to reduce that. And, and we beat the, VOs, the VOC content, which is uh, uh, by almost 50% off the standard that they had. And our uh, formaldehyde was uh, north of 60%, almost 70% and in terms of the average for the two, the two floors. So we really you know, were able to do that in combination with the ventilation in the house and, and then all the products that we you know, eliminated or reduced the, you know, the toxic load into the house. And, uh-huh. and so, and, and so that's a really important piece. And so, you know, every house is going to be a little bit different. Every decision that every client's going to make is a little bit different, but you know, the reality was is that we could meet this very difficult guideline that no one else has ever met except in Japan. And, and because of, and we're just a little, little kitchen and home building company here in Calgary, but you know, we, but because of our focus, and you know our desire for it, uh, for both you know and the client's desire for it, we were able to meet that that requirement. That's fantastic. Well, congrats. That's that's a huge achievement. So, like, what 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 was that? What was the testing process like? Was it kind of like a like a blower air door test where they just you know sealed the whole house off and and sucked air out, or what, what did it look like to? To figure out how much formaldehyde and VOCs you had in the house. Yeah, they bring in they bring in a basically little, yeah, they just bring in little test tubes essentially, and they circulate through the air for a, a specific amount of time, and uh, they take those tubes, they send them off, and then they uh, look for VOC content, formaldehyde, and then particulate matter. You know, so they're looking for different aspects that you know would show up, and then those products can also show what kind of chemicals that are. Uh, you know, show up in the house and through the testing. So um, I'm not the technical guru on that. I have a gentleman that works for me that's the, you know, uh, in, into the into the weeds of that. But uh, but the basic is is that it's basically a, um, an air test that gets goes through a test tube for a period of time and then it gets sent off, gets tested, and then from that we can we can determine you know the VOC content from all the hide and other chemicals that are used in the house. Interesting. Okay. So, so some, like theoretically somebody could do this for like a house that they were living in now, if they wanted to see what their, you know, chemical load is when to, to kind of rule that out, if it was um, a health concern, uh, is that something anybody can do or is it difficult to access? What's, what's the cost of that? That's a really good question. And so you can, you can, uh, we've done it here. The, we just did it for a, a gentleman. We just sent it off this week and uh, it was an old house that uh, he had renovated about 28 years ago or something like that. And it was one of the first kitchen jobs that I ever did. So that's how it started. He'd, uh, and we had a discussion about a year and a half ago and he ended up in a health crisis after that. And he just happened to phone me here about 10 days ago and said, Hey, you know, Kevin, I know you, you know, you have this sensitivity and you know, I'm having this lung issue. What can you help me out? Like, what can we do? And I said, we'll come over. We'll do an air test on your house. And so we're just waiting for the results on that. But you know, the idea is, is that you know, we're looking for, uh, you know, so we're doing a radon test in this house because yeah. you know, Calgary you know, has a high radon level and Alberta does. Yeah. Um, and then we're doing a testing for mold and then just also just for whatever chemicals that, you know, that will show up in the, in the air test as well. So yeah. um, every house is a little bit different. Um, and so, you know, you're, it, and it's not, I, I don't have the, the, the cost of that off the top of my head, uh, but it, it's, uh, but it's certainly something that's possible. And, and it just, again, it's just in, in our world, it's just another uh, piece of information that helps you make better decisions down the road. And that's if, you know, if you have an older house or you have, you know, somebody's not feeling good in the house, it, it you know, it might be a water penetration uh, might be mold that, you know, that that's not visible, that's, uh, you know, somewhere behind or lots of people, I can't tell you how many houses I've been to where people say, well, we've had this little leak in the corner and, you know, it's not been really too bad. Um, and, you know, there's just a little bit of black stuff on the drywall. Well, that's mold. Yeah. And, and so, uh, you know, so everybody's a little bit different again. And, 
and what they find tolerable is is different again. So, totally. Well, I mean, it's it's. Uh, I'm actually glad you brought that up because I never even thought of it. But like, like one of my good buddies, he's um, he's been going through a, just a, a terrible health crisis the last couple of years, and he's been diagnosed with you know everything under the sun. But it, you know, when they, when it time time come to time comes to start doing the treatments he's he wasn't improving and eventually they, they realized that he has a, a severe mold allergy from a house that he'd been he i think he was the house he grew up in and um he's so sensitive to it now that he he literally can't be in a building that um that has any mold in it whatsoever and so he's he's now he's trying to rent you know um a house to or try to find a place that he can live I think these these mold tests are you know a couple a thousand bucks a pop at least or whatever, but it's it's been really difficult for him. Um, but I think now he's found a a place. He's he's slowly kind of rebuilding his his house or his health. But it's um, yeah, that's something that we're not even like you, we're not bringing that into our houses um, like consciously. That's more of the way the houses are built whether that's, you know, not putting the vapor barrier in the right place or, you know, not having flashing done properly, just little things like that. And it can create, uh, it can kill you. It can, it can, it can ruin your health. It can ruin your health. And that, and ultimately that's really, you know, that's the key thing that all of us, we all need. And, uh, I was, I was, uh, I had a book that, uh, I bought years ago and uh, it was called Younger Next Year. And the idea being that, you know, if you exercise a little bit more, did a little, you know, ate better, but primarily exercise that, you know, next year, your, your body, you might be older, but your body would be younger. Yeah. And, and so, uh, you know, the idea that the, the next year is that you're, you know, it's, you know, you'll be healthier next year if you make some of the things that we talked about here this today, yeah. which is eliminating, you know, toxic pieces that are, you know, uh, that we, you know, that we take for granted that come into our house and that we're using the cleaning of our house that we're using on our bodies. Uh, and, you know, so uh, the type of food that we eat. And, and if, if you, re you keep reducing all those exposures and toxins that go into your body, then hopefully you're healthier next year rather than worse off next year. Totally. Well, and I mean, like, that's like the, I, I believe that all, all disease stems from stress, whether that's, you know, physical, whether it's emotional, uh, whether it's environmental. And so, you know, if you, if you want to ha have health, you have to, you have to, uh, you know, remove, you know, the, the chronic stresses and allow your body to heal. But if you're constantly getting beat down, like if every breath you're taking is, is bringing in, um, you know, some kind of a toxic element in your body, you're not going to, your body's never going to have a chance to go through that rebuilding process, like you're saying. So uh, one of the other question I want to ask you, Kevin, was um, coming back to, to your, um, to your, uh, your client where, where you got the UL Green Guard certification, the, the first uh, building outside of Japan. Um, like, just, just for, to give people some ideas, like, what, what would be the like the cost difference if somebody was just to build like your standard you know home like like obviously you know similar level of furnishings, um, but if they were just to switch to these these you know healthy home uh, you know products and and uh, the way that you guys are building them, what, what would be the cost difference between that that those two styles of building? Yeah, so every every person has their own kind of. What I would call interior design needs in terms of what they you know find important and in this house there was we had a lot of uh you know millwork details yeah. um that was outside that but you know the so my best my best analogy to that is is that you know something when we first started down this road of trying to find healthier materials you know we we said look you can buy formaldehyde free mdf and so we went to our supplier and he said, well, well, we don't have any of that. And he said, I said, well, I know it's available. He says, yeah, but you gotta buy a truckload of it. And he said, well, uh, well, we're not buying a truckload of it because we need to know if it's even going to work with the systems that we have here internally and how it's gonna spray and yeah. how the finish is gonna sit to it and you know what we have to do to it. So anyway, we eventually got some, You know, they finally brought some into us. And and I remember my, my shop manager coming up to me and going, okay, so 
what do you think the difference is between a, a sheet of MDF that has formaldehyde in it and one that doesn't? I said, I don't know, 10 bucks. He goes, 50 cents. And so, so that the idea that, you know, health, health, healthier products are available and they're, you know, a, a non-VOC paint is more than, than you know, a, a VOC compliant paint. And it might be, depending on the manufacturer, 15 or $20 a gallon or whatever. But, you know, so that is going, depending on the value of your home, the size of your home or whatever. But, you know, that is just one of those pieces that, you know, you, you can easily multiply that out based on, you know, what you, what you find important. If you're repainting your home or just repainting, a, if you're just repainting a bathroom, it's a gallon of paint, it's 15 or 20 bucks. I can tell you that it's going to be a lot better for you. And so, so, so part of it is, is that, you know, a, a tube of sil a regular tube of silicone might be 295 at Home Depot and the specialty product that, you know, essentially will for silicone in most cases is keeping it something just in place. So it doesn't just fall off. Uh, you know, that the specialty tube might be six bucks, but yeah. you're not, you know, you're not dropping, you know, hundreds of those tubes in the house. You're only dropping a few. So different, different needs, you know, different yeah. size, different style of houses require different materials. And so, um, and, and some clients, you know, I, I know that I shouldn't eat my burgers and fries from five guys and fries, but I still do because I still like it. And so for some people, they'll still make some decisions that conscious decisions that say, you know, that's what I really want from a look or style or finish. So I'm willing to sacrifice, you know, some of these things that you're telling me about Kevin, because that's what I really want from a, a look or style standpoint. Yeah. And then other clients just say, look, my only decision is what is the health conscious aspect of this? What's my decision? Yeah. What is it? How am I going to do it? So, um, and so, Every house is different, you know. Tile, a tile floor is is you know is an organic product. It's not going to it's not going to off gas, right? But but you know you're if you put a stone in and then you got to put a sealer on. Well, you got to you got to deal with the sealer and what's the right sealer and 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 there are high VOC content sealers, you know. For and so you got to so every every decision is a is an exploration with the client quite honestly and and it's and at the end of the day it's you know you have to become your best advocate for yourself because industry in general isn't out there the government's not telling us a lot about it they've never you know when we were dealing with the nrc the national research council of canada um, at the time they were just going to start testing for the first time what the voc content of a house was during construction post-construction and then post-possession. And so no one's testing for what it, what it means for the health of the homeowner. And, and so you have to become your own best advocate and you have to you know, worry about yourself, you have to worry about your family and at the same time, you're gonna be worrying about the environment. And I think that's, that's, the, best, that's the best method of building a home. Totally. But it, it, I mean, it, it sounds like, like these aren't, it's not like the house is gonna be 50% more to build a healthy home versus like we're talking, you know, on some products, it's, you know, fractions of a cent versus other ones, you know, might be, you know, like, like the silicone or something like it might be double the cost, but, but typically those are, they're not big. Very, uh, very small. Big things. And, yeah. and, you know, I think at the end of the day, you know, the homeowner, you know, can decide. I, it, my job isn't to tell the homeowner how much money they can spend it's their job to tell us how much money they want to spend on something and and yeah. so everybody has their own uh capability and and their own needs and um whether it's their own or you know i mean we had a someone in here the other day that you know she said my daughter has uh asthma so it's really important to me that you know i'm i, I don't you know send her into a tailspin because we move into a new house yeah and so so i think it's it's just again, it's being conscious of it. And I don't think, and then, you know, and exploring it and, and determining what's best. And so, you know, you can buy a $2 tile and you can buy, you know, a tile to your heart's content, I call it. And so, but they're basically going to be, you know, they still have the same objective. And so the price of your house is depending on the products that are being used in the house, but the fundamentals of, of, you know, those choices are, you know, there are healthier products that are competitive in price to, yeah. Uh, you know, to something that's not as healthy. Totally. So, I mean, like, like, what would you say that 
um, like barring, you know, some of those more expensive kind of aesthetic decisions, it would be totally possible to build like a, a, a really nice house with, um, I get, yeah, let me put it this way. Would it be possible to build a, uh, you know, a, a really nice house that would still meet that um, Green Guard certification without going, you know, crazy uh, outside of the budget? Like, what, what would that cost to build like a low cost home that would still meet Green Guard standards? You're like all my customers to put <laughs> you know, what your house is going to be without what the specification is. Yeah. So, so the, the, it, at the end of the day, is that, you know, when you're looking, and, and I'm not avoiding your question, but, you know, everybody's house is different, you know, uh, and everybody's budget's different, and their location is different. And, and, you know, there might be somebody here from Texas, there might be somebody here from Florida, there might be somebody here from, you know, Northern Alberta listening to this podcast. And so each one of those areas is a little bit different. Yeah. The reality is, is that you can have a beautifully built, healthily built home for not a lot more money, but you have to be making those conscious decisions. Yeah. As you're doing. yeah see, and that's the thing that's really standing out for me is it's, it's not so much like a, a massive increase in price. It's a massive increase in like research and like decisions. And, and like, I mean, I'm just, I know from, um, you know, working with our past clients and also, you know, uh, you know, being involved in renovations myself, like decision fatigue is, is huge. And it's just so easy just uh, to hell with it. Just go with that one. But um, it, it sounds like that's where like one of the major services you, you provide to your clients is helping them to navigate these decisions and figure out, you know, what, what are the priorities that, that you really want to stay away from, like the paints and the, um, you know, the, the high formaldehyde products versus the other ones where like, you know what, these ones, it doesn't really matter. You can, you can choose that. Like, is that, is that kind of what, one of the things that you, you provide to your customers or? Yeah, for sure. We want, we, you know, we give them advice. That's, you know, that's why you're, you know, you're, you're, you're going to choose us so that we think that we give you good advice, that we help you make the right decision um, within the budget that you've provided and, 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 uh, and the interior design look and style that you want. So whether that's a painted finish or, a, you know, a wood or, um, you know, how we're going to do that is either water-based or it's a laminate or it's a painted surface. Um, you know, all those different aspects come into the play because what you want in your house is different than what I want in my house, which is different than what my brother wants in his house. And so ultimately it's trying to find that balance between the look and style and fit and finish that you want, but knowing that you can have the best interior designed house using beautiful products and beautiful finishes without a sacrifice. And so I kind of, my analogy is, is that, you know, you know, in the food business and in the restaurant business, and, you know, uh, everybody wants to know, you know, the, the, when you're going to, you know, in, in general, uh, higher end restaurants, it's, it's farm to table, right? I want to know where the food is. I want to know, I wanted to know, you know, who that, who that grower was and that he's respecting my ability to, you know, to build, you know, to, to have raised that product, that beef, that chicken, that, you know, that produce, so that it's, that it's the least uh, toxic that, you know, and, and that's really kind of the concept in my mind anyway, and that it's ending up on your table and you're having the freshest materials that are there. Yeah. And so my analogy is, is that, you know, for us, you know, we're, we're kind of providing the same thing and I call it a foundation to possession. And so, you know, at the end of the day, we're here to provide advice right from the foundation, right through to possession to try and build the house for you that's, um, you know, as healthy as we can build it for you within the parameters that each homeowner chooses it to be. Yeah, that's awesome. And so like, um, do you have, um, like, you've been doing this for a few years now. Uh, have you had any, you know, big success stories in terms of some of the clients that have, um, you know, moved into your houses? Like, have you, um, like, basically, can, can people tell a difference? Like, is, is, it, is it worth the hassle to, to do this stuff? Yeah, you know, the hassle really isn't to the homeowner, just to be <laughs> clear. The, ha the, you know, the, the burden lies with us as your contractor. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and then secondly, it, it lies with the trades men and women that work on the job site and that they are paying attention to the policies and the procedures that we want you to follow. 
And more than anything, the materials that we want you to use when you're using adhesives primarily, mm -hmm. uh, painting materials and, you know, uh, you know, those type of things. So it, you know, we can tell, you know, my granite guy, my plumber, my HVAC guy, uh, and, you know, the owners and they all shake their heads and then, you know, they send the first tradesman out and we check with him and he says, yeah, I got it. I understand. And then the next day, a different crew comes in to do the same work, but yeah. they've never been told. And so you're, you're on con constant, you know, I, I trust that they're doing what there's, they said they were going to do, but we always verify it. Yeah. You know, we're looking at the paint cans when it's being painted. We're looking at the, you know, what do they have for the tubes that are being used for, you know, the caulking, what they're using for the adhesives for the, you know, for the flooring. We're looking at the, the silicones, you know, replacements that they're using, uh, you know, right down to, you know, complaining to our mirror guy the one day, you know, um, just prior to our air test for the one house was, you know, they were using Windex, uh, you know, on the, on the glass. And I mean, it was in a house that there's no chemicals, you know, really. And then you throw, uh, you know, a high VOC product like Windex in there. I mean, I was like, uh, I said, you know, I was livid, quite honestly. But, you know, it, it's so it's, it's this constant vigilance of working on behalf of the homeowner. And, and, and so the burden isn't so much theirs other than, you know, they're going through the same thousands of decisions that are going into the actual product and selection, but not necessarily the actual, uh, you know, management of the, of the team that's going to be building their house. Yeah. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Absolutely. But I guess in terms of like, um, like, uh, you know, success stories with, with your client's house, like you, you've mentioned, you know, you've had a few people that, you know, have, have approached you with, um, you know, cancers and asthmas and stuff like that. Like they, those people, when they, when they move into your, you know, their new kind of healthy homes, do they, do they notice a big difference? Well, you know, I think the one thing is, is that, you know, this is relatively new, yeah. you know, in the, in the big picture. So, um, you know, the house that we just finished, we finished it last September. And then of course we're going through, um, you know, the COVID lockdowns, you know, start, stop, start, stop. And yeah. so, you know, we really haven't been able to highlight that maybe as much as we liked. And it was delayed for a long time because of it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, people have other health concerns rather than, you know, listening, you know, listening to the healthy home story, <laughs> but the house the you know, the, the, the client that moved into the healthy home, um, you know, you know, they're thrilled. Um, you know, she actually put in a, a, a testing system that's built right in, hardwired into the wall that tells her her VOC content, her, um, you know, the uh, particulate matter, the temperature, the humidity, and she can see that anywhere in the world. And you can, you can actually tell, you know, what's going on in the house at any given time. So, you know, so she was showing, it showed how effective her ventilation system was because, when the smoke rolled in this summer, you know, we had relatively few smoke days in Calgary this year, but, uh, you know, they have these big opening doors and, and uh, they had them open and then the, kind of the smoke just kind of rolled in fairly quickly uh, one day and uh, the particulate matter went from one uh, uh, to 65 within or, you know, 60 plus right, right away. And so she closed all her doors and closed all her windows the ventilation system kicked in and she went back to her monitoring system and it went right back to one. And so, so it, it's, so there's, you know, there's ways to, you know, to mitigate, um, you know, and, and try and improve the air quality. And that's through, you know, again, through ventilation, which is, you know, one of the key things. And, and so um, each house is different and, and, and how the system set up is different, but, you know, you can, it's another way to, to, you know, to clean up the air quality of your house. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, no, that's, that's fascinating. I'm just thinking, um, I know I've seen like the charts where they, they show like the different levels of, you know, particulate in the air. And I, I think like, um, oh my, for my friend, it's like, like, you know, several hundred, you know, parts per million or whatever is, is when things get really dangerous. Like, like, I think, you know, China pre the Olympics when they really cleaned everything up, thing up, it could be like 700 parts per million there, but that's like, you know, you're basically in a house that's on fire, but um, yeah, like, like, is there, have you done any more of those, um, like those parts per million 
tests in terms of uh, particular? We, just, we actually just were trying a, a different system in in uh, one of our houses that we built uh, that's you know built on a healthy basis, and we just throw it in there just actually this week to just to start you know seeing a, a different system, trying it out, seeing what it tells us, um, you know, so we can see, and then we're actually going to uh, put in a charcoal filter on the system and then just see what kind of difference that makes over the next two or three weeks as well. So we're going to, we're actually just, you know, we're, this is a, you know, we're, this is green shoots, right? In the big yeah, picture, yeah. right? This is the little green shoots and we're at the very front end of this. Yeah. There's really not a lot of people, you know, in the construction industry talking about it, doing anything about it. And, and certainly so, and we're learning about it every time. And, and the more, you know, the more we can learn, the happier, you know, I am and, and understanding it. And, and so it allows me to, to help other people. That's really what, you know, um, you know, that's what this is about is I don't, you know, I, I want to help people so they don't ever have to go through what I've gone through because it's, it's not only difficult on myself, but it's difficult on, you know, the people that, that are surrounded around you. And, and in my case, my, my, uh, spouse and my kids, you know, they're affected on what we can do or, you know, uh, sometimes where we can go or how long we can stay there. Uh, and, you know, same with my staff, you know, we have a no scent policy in here, um, you know, to try and manage that as well. And, and so we're, you know, we're, it, it affects everybody else when you're doing this. But in some cases, some of the people that I work with, you know, they do a great job. They listen to, you know, our concepts and, and, and they're trying to improve their lives and their, you know, and their health at the same time. And for other, they don't care. And, and so I think that, you know, the success stories are going to come because we're at the front end of this and, um, and, and being able to take what we've learned over the last, you know, really what I've learned over the last eight years, what we've actually been working on over the last four years, almost four years, three and a half years now, and, and apply that to, you know, real world construction and then having, you know, real world results and testing results from it, then we can actually keep moving it forward. Because, you know, it's one thing to talk about, it's another one to prove it. And, and then it's also another one to, you know, to duplicate it over and over again. And, yeah. and it's, um, again, every house is different, every client's different, every budget's different. And, and, uh, but, you know, we, we want to, to help people live, you know, and build a healthier life. That's ultimately the goal. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just as you're, um, as you're kind of talking about your, your, the fact that you're at, at the you know, early stages of this, it, it kind of reminds me you're, you're almost where the organic and kind of regenerative agriculture movement was. I, hopefully it's not 20, 20 years ago, 25 years ago. But that's that's when my parents first got into it, and well, that was over 30 years ago. But it um, it was they were really the pioneers for for quite a few years. But now, um, like, I mean, every week I'm getting you know contacts from you know big, big players like you know there's land investors, there's there's an organization called Regeneration Canada. Now. Like it's it's finally mainstream now to think about you know the the chemicals that we're putting on our food but we still got this gap where it's like, yeah, but we're not thinking about the chemicals that we're putting in our house. And so I don't know, like, what, what do you think that the, the time span is going to take before, you know, those green shoots are starting to bear fruit and this is more mainstream and it's been scaled up. How, if you had to make a prediction. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I think it's, it's, it's going to take, uh, you know, a generation of leadership. Yeah. And when I say that the next, the next, you know, 35 year old, the next uh, Elon Musk that comes in and, and uh, you know, that, you know, recharges the, you know, the building industry and changes the, the mandate of the corporate body and what they're producing and how they're producing it. And so I think, you know, industry will change as, as the, you know, as we saw at the grocery store, we saw them change you know, from, you know, there was a little section that had organic on it, or maybe a little area that said organic on it, or maybe it said non-GMO, yeah. uh, which many of us didn't even know what that meant 10 years ago. And, or what was glyphosate or what, what is Roundup and what are these things? And so, so I think that ultimately what we're going to see is, is that, that as the consumer becomes more aware, they're, they're going to, industry will change as they have in the agricultural 
uh, you know, world to, uh, you know, and the grocery store aisle to meet the demand that the consumer wants for a healthier life. And that will transform into the home, you know, the, the home construction industry and construction in general. And it does in the commercial world because big businesses are trying to attract people by saying, look, we have a healthier space for you to come to work in because yeah. uh, we've, you know, we focused on you and your health and wellness, whether that's through providing food or, you know, relaxation spaces or just, you know, look at how, what a great built environment we have. And so that's the, you know, they, you know, the Googles and the Apples and, and you know, the big companies in the world can afford to do that. Uh, the reality is that, you know, they set the trend uh, demand and, and demand so the corporations actually start to, you know, pay more attention to it and then provide it to the industry as a whole, and the, which eventually ends up in our private homes. Yeah, absolutely. So, Kevin, like where, um, I mean, there's, this is obviously, um, like it's, I know it's a new space and, and, uh, but there's, there's so much to learn. Where, where would you recommend people go to find out more um, information about this space of, of healthy homes? Where can people find out more, more info? Well, it's not, you know, to me, it, I, you know, my, my mission isn't just about healthy homes. Uh, I think it's about a, a healthier life. Yeah. And, and I think that, you know, so, um, because the home is the built environment, but it's also what you're using inside that environment. Yeah. And, and then eventually what you're, you know, what you're, what you're doing, using inside the house, and then you're using on your own body. And so, um, so, you know, for me, uh, there was some great organizations that, you know, that I looked to at the time, uh, trying to understand, you know, from the, you know, the cleaning world and, and body products and stuff that I was using, um, you know, cosmetics that my wife was using, um, you know, and, and those type of things. And, and that is ewg.org. And, and they, and, you know, they'll, you know, in general, you can put in the name of a product and they'll give you some uh, information. They have lots of different guidelines. And, uh, uh, you know, it's just on their site the other day. It's just, there's just, it's endless amounts. There's so much more information about yeah. uh, what you can do. Uh, and just on that website compared to, you know, five years ago is unbelievable. Um, you know, uh, the Healthy Building Network is uh, is designed around trying to, you know, provide information to uh, industry, to designers, architects, builders, um, developers, that type of thing, and, and have uh, great databases and information that you can go to on that. Um, you know, and, and I think they're, they're just another uh, a huge source for that. And I think that, you know, ultimately it's, um, you know, it's, there's all kinds of different websites, but those are, you know, for me, those are two great ones. Uh, you know, uh, I'm doing, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing the a Parsons uh, um, Healthy Materials Lab course. Uh, I, it just started today for me. And, and, and just, again, just trying to understand it a little bit better. And, 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 you know, I'm not a, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, but I'm just, but I do understand, you know, after going through this health journey is, is that, uh, you know, people need to become more aware. And, you know, this is, uh, um, you know, I, I guess a mandate that I've taken on to just try and help people uh, understand it. I've got you know, all the experience in the world in the construction industry. Uh, I've worked on, you know, great houses for 30 years and deal on all the different levels of products and, and, and services that we provide, you know, bathrooms, kitchens, and all those, you know, those things that, that make our houses livable and enjoyable and, and, you know, for us to entertain and live in. And so that, you know, taking all that, you know, knowledge and, and then combining it with what I've learned through this health journey uh, is, is, it's going to help people. And, and I think that the more, uh, we can communicate that with people, you know, hopefully we can touch some, some great lives and make them better for them. Absolutely. One, well, and you've, so you've got, you've got, um, a website where people can go and find out more information. And you've also got a, a podcast where you talk, uh, about a lot more, uh, you know, everything from healthy homes to healthy living, like you were just talking about where, where can people go to find out more information about that? Yeah, so uh, you know, again, we're in the green shoot stages of our uh, podcast, and uh, it's called "Build a Healthier Life," and and uh, you know, we've been able to, in a short period of time, connect with really some of the 
some great, uh, you know, thought leaders, uh, product innovators, and change makers. Uh, you know, people like yourself and and uh, you know people from Parsons and Healthy Building Network and and other areas that you know. Uh, I, I just learned every time I talk to somebody, I just learn a little bit more. Uh, become a little bit more confused and uh, but become a little bit more inspired that I, you know that that build a healthier lives on the right path to be able to consolidate the information that people need uh, and uh, and and will desire to you know to try and you know extend their life without challenges and and, and you know be uh, not just younger next year but healthier next year absolutely and then your your website is empirecustomhomes.com is that right that's right. And then uh, our empirekitchenandbath.com and then uh, and, and then we're on Instagram for both of those as well. So awesome. Well, um, Kevin, do you have any last words for folks before we before we close out? Well, you know, I, I think, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's, you know, at, we're it, it, you just have to make that you have to be your own advocate for your own, you know, your own healthy life and and uh, and get out there and, and understand what, you know, you're choosing. Uh, whether it's you know personal products, cleaning products, um, building products, and and whatever you're bringing into your house, and and at the end of the day, uh, I hope that I hope a little bit of the information that we provided today helps you uh, and uh, you know build a healthier life, and that you're that you're uh, even healthier next year. So. Totally. Well, Kevin, thanks so much for um, for sitting down with me today, and and it's it's. Uh, you know, I, I, I left kind of the construction industry because I was so overwhelmed by how shitty it was. And, um, and also because, you know, I was starting to get drawn more towards agriculture, but I was thrilled to, you know, meet up with you and hear about how you're trying to do the same thing that I'm trying to do with agriculture with the built environment. And so it's just, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's really inspiring to hear some of your work and some of your success already, even though you're in the early days and hopefully it doesn't take you 30 years <laughs> before, uh, before there's another been... 30. Yeah. <laughs> another 30 years. Totally. Well, uh, anyways, thanks so much. And we'll, uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you for having me.